والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's the only one worthy of praise. I seek his help, his guidance and his forgiveness. I believe in him and I trust him. I seek refuge in Almighty Allah from the evil of our passions. Indeed, whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides him to Al-Islam, no one can mislead him after Allah. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him astray, no one can guide him after Allah. I testify openly that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah Rabbil Alameen and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and the seal of all the prophets. O Muslims, you must know that the best speech is the speech of Almighty Allah which is the Quran. The best guidance is the course of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is his sunnah. The worst of all affairs is innovation and addition to the religion of Islam. Indeed, every addition to the religion of Islam will lead to hellfire. I adjure you as well as myself to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your ability. Fear Allah and don't die unless you are in a state of Islam. After this, I greet you all with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty Allah be with you all. I'd like to welcome you all today for classical reading, which we're reading from book Riyad al-Salihin for the Imam al-Nawawi, rahmatullahi alayhi. Today, inshallah, we're dealing with the book Garden of the Righteousness by Imam al-Nawawi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his soul with his mercy. And today, we're going to be dealing with a new chapter, which is chapter number four. Hopefully that you have your book with you today. And this is going to be Dar es Salaam publication version. And it's going to be volume number one, chapter number four. And this chapter deals with truthfulness. Babu al-Sidq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, ittaqu allaha wa kunu ma'a al-sadiqeen. This is Surah At-Tawbah, Repentance, verse 119. Allah say, O oh, you believe, fear Allah, have the taqwa of Allah, have God conscious, and be with the truthful ones. And we, hear, we need to stop here a little bit, that the calling on those who believe, O oh, who you believe, have the taqwa of Allah, and be with who? Be with the truthful one. So this is something very important. Where do you sit? With whom do you socialize? What is your environment? You as a Muslim, you have to sit with Muslims. You as a believer, you should be surrounded with the believers. You a person who want to be honest and truthful, you have to be with the truthful ones. Those who keep the promise, 
those who say the truth, those who try to do the right action, because the environment has impact on our soul and in our heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ So if Allah wants you to be with the Sadiqeen, you shouldn't be with the other people, the sinful one, the liar one. This is something very important because the Sadiq, to say the truth, is part of the main characteristic of Islam to such a degree that the Prophet ﷺ has been known to be a Sadiq al-Ameen. This is something been even known about the Prophet ﷺ before he became the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have very important hadith. We start in this chapter, hadith number one, which he reported by Ibn Mas'ud. May Allah be pleased with him that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, Inna as-sidqa yahdi ila al-birr. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that indeed truthfulness leads to righteousness. Alaykum bil-sidq. إن الصدق يهدي إلى البر وإن البر يهدي إلى الجنة وإن الرجل لا يصدق ويتحرى الصدق حتى يكتب عند الله صديقا أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say keep with truthfulness be a person of your word don't lie. Because when we're talking about Sadq, means that say what actually happened or what you're planning to do. Don't say something different, contrary to what had taken place. And this is what we call to be a truthful person. So the Prophet is saying, Alaykum bis Sadq. That means put all your effort to be sincere and serious by keeping the right word according what took place or what you are witness to it. Alaykum bis-sidq. Why? Because the sidq leads to righteousness. If you're looking for al-bir, you're looking for righteousness, that you keep saying the truth. Because truthfulness will lead to Jannah. So the people who want to be from the people of Jannah, those who want to enter Jannah, they need to watch what they saying. We are not a media. We are not a TV station. We keep talking, talking, talking. We have to have a monitor over ourselves. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ We have always to be thankful and mindful and careful about what we're saying because we believe, as Allah told us, that anything is uttered by the tongue is what is going to be recorded. And there is two angels, Raqib and Atid, which is a count and write everything. So this is the Prophet Wasallam telling us, continuing and trying always to be truthful about what you're saying. And because this will lead to something else, which is righteousness. And as a result of doing righteousness, you be from the people of Jannah. Now let's see the opposite. وَالْكَذِبِ Be aware of lying. Why? Because a man continue lying. Now الرَّجُلْ لَا يَكْذِبْ وَيَتَحَرَّ الْكَذِبْ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَذَّابًا أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. So the first person will be recorded with Allah, special record that he is a truthful person. In the contrary of this, the opposite, a person who's lying, this lying is going to lead to fusuk. It's going to lead to sin. It's going to lead to haram. And as a result of this, you'll be recorded with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a liar. Everybody would like to have a good record with Allah. You don't like with your manager or your boss that somebody give a bad report about you. What about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this comes as a result of what? Of the tongue, watching. And this was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's teaching us, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُدْ This is part of our faith, part of belief. Because, because you are a true believer, you're always mindful and careful about what he's saying, especially when 
you given some information you have to give it accurate according to the best of your ability that you saw or you know otherwise your racket will be bad with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of course no one would like to do this this shows us about one kind of being truthful because there is a way that you be truthful with your tongue there is a, another category to be truthful in your action and also there is another way that you be sincere in your heart and your deed because also like a person making salah have to be truthful in your salah that means do it according the way it's supposed to be done so it's not only being a truthful that you only saying what is right and this is it but we need also truthfulness in our saying in our action and also in our intention the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the hadith which he reported reported by muhammad al hasan ibn ali may allah be pleased with him and his father that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said da ma yuribuk ila ma la yuribuk leave what is doubtful leave it alone to to which is not doubtful you have two choices between two things okay and maybe you are not sure about it so it's better for you to leave it alone leave it alone this will be safe to be in the safe side something is doubtful for you leave it alone if it's something that doubtful that you don't know if it's halal or haram to eat it is a action some kind of bargain you don't know if this is a proper way or no if you are not certain so is better to leave it alone why because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said fa inna as-sidqa tumanina now if this action is correct and right you will feel right in your heart you feel comfortable in your heart you see so you can see there is a communication between your heart and what you trying to do your limbs because you became in the safe side now you're going to feel yourself comfortable what you doing now if you take the other side which is doubtful you are not going to be feeling comfortable so alhamdulillah al islam had give us a lot of variety okay look to things as example in drinking you found water you found milk you found uh, uh, a lot of different types of juices so why we have to go to something okay this is beer this is non alcohol this is alcohol this is 1% leave it alone why so be serious be truthful also in what you eat what you drink and what you do doubtful leave it alone and this was the teaching of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said wal kadhibu riba lying lying is what is something that you going to say oh, i'm not sure can i do it or not so leave it alone you will be in the safe side inshallah when hirak had get to him a messenger of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam abu sufyan he went to carry the message of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to hirak which is the king of the roman in that time and this is part of the duty of the muslim governor a muslim governor one of his main duties is sending da'wah breaching the islam okay so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had sent representative and messengers to representative him and to carry the da'wah as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying alladhina in makkanahum fil ard aqamu as-salah wa atahu az-zakah wa amaru bil ma'ruf wa nahu 'anil munkar so one of the main uh, jobs and duties of a muslim ruler is to send representative to give da'wah kings and priests and ministers those people who are not in the islam so the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has sent abu sufyan to be his representative to the king of roman the roman in that time so he was asking about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said what does this prophet teach you what does he teach you he said he command us to worship allah alone worship allah alone and don't associate any partner with him and leave alone what you had inherit from your ancestors of saying or worshiping and he said wa ya'murna bis salah was sidq and he command us to pray and to be truthful 
This is something very important. So the same way the Islam teaches us to pray, which is a relationship between you and Allah, it teaches you also to be what? To be what? To be a truthful. Don't lie. Be honest with the people and tell them what happened exactly. So he said, يَأْمُرْنَا بِالصَّلَاةِ and a sidq So he, he can see that how important the salah is and in equal to this, being truthful. This was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had commanded him to do. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is showing us also in the action and in the dua and what you aim in, what is your goal in this life. This is very important hadith which uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying in hadith which he reported uh, by Abi Thabit and it been said that Abu Sa'id and said, من سأل الله تعالى الشهادة بصدق من سأل الله تبارك وتعالى الشهادة بصدق بلغه الله منازل الشهداء وإن مات على فراشه A person who is his intention, his hope to be martyred in the cause of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate him to the level of the martyrs. Even if he die in his bed. But he said, oh Allah, marzukna shahada. And sometimes there's a person making dua, he's making dua and he's talking to the other person and say, uh, uh, and he's giving you signal and do this and do that. And so there is no, there is no even khushu' in the dua. His mind is not his dua. If you are sincere asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something and Allah sees that you are truthful, in what you asking and what you begging, which you understand will understand the, the level, the, the higher grade of a, a person who died in the cause of Allah. As the Prophet ﷺ had told us, that in the hadith, which is the meaning is, in the Jannah, ma daraja. Ma bayna kulli daraja wa daraja kama bayna al-samai wal-ard. Subhanallah. Allah subh- he says the Prophet ﷺ in Jannah, in heaven, in paradise, there is a hundred ranks level. And the distance between every level and the next one as much as what's between the heaven and the earth. Subhanallah. Can you imagine hundred? And he said that all this Allah had prepared it for who? Those who struggle in the cause of Allah. For the mujahideen. Mi'ata daraja. A hundred ranks. So a person can reach this level with sincerity in his dua, his sidq, his truthfulness, when he is begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, فَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُ اللَّهَ الْجَنَّةِ فَاسْأَلُوهُ الْفُرْدَوْسِ If you beg Allah for Jannah, ask Firdaus, one of the levels. He said, because this is the midst and the best and the highest of Jannah, Above it is the throne of Almighty Allah. So if a person sincere, truthful in his dua and say, Oh Allah, rizukni shahada. Oh Allah, make me die in, in your cause. And he truthful about what he's saying. He meant it. Allah will give him this reward and this level. Even if he die in his house, in his bed. Subhanallah. Why? Again, because this is what is Islam wants you to be truthful with the people, be truthful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all action that you may do in so you can reach such a great way. Again, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling us about a person being truthful in bargain. And say, al bayyan bil khiyar, which is the buyer and the seller, or the seller, and the buyer. They have a choice negotiating their item as long as they are still in the same place. you in the marketplace, or you in the shop, or the supermarket, we can bargain. Even if we agree about the price, I still have the option to say, this okay, as long as I didn't leave my spot. Okay? So this is... A issue here that we want to relate something. Islam is not a religion of a mosque. Islam is a religion of 
every of totality everything in your life why islam talks about you understand dealing with people to be truthful and after this come talking about people buying and selling so in al islam we don't have dunya and akhirah you see we don't have this separation uh, like uh, state and church we don't have it everything supposed to be islam and everything need to be conducted accord, according to islam as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say, my prayer, my sacrifice, my daily life, even my death, is for Allah and by Allah. So we don't have this separation, which in maybe in other beliefs or other religions. Everything in your life as a Muslim is supposed to be Islam. So now your relationship with Allah in dua in salah have to be truthful. And with the people when you talk to them, you have to be truthful. Don't lie to them. And even when you buy and you sell with the people, also you have to be truthful. And you have the choice as long as still in the supermarket or in the center that you can dismiss this kind of bargain. So the Prophet ﷺ says, that ما لم يتفرقا, as long as they are, did not separate it from each other. So now what's going to happen? The buyer maybe is not truthful in what he paying. Maybe he giving you fake money. The other person who's selling, he may understand giving you something rotten. is not good. So this is also being truthful in your action. Not only truthful, only when you speak. So now Islam wants you to be truthful in what, how you deal with the people. And we know the story of this man, the Prophet ﷺ, to show you how Islam is Islam of everything. Street, mosque, family life, business, war, peace, social life, economic life. Everything is Islam. The Prophet ﷺ didn't Stay in the mosque only making prayer. The Prophet ﷺ, he went to the marketplace acting like what? An inspector. Today we know that the city is sending understand other people to see if they are licensed, see if the, uh, the food expires or not, all these things. This has been started already by the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And he showed us the proper leadership and the proper imam is not a person who stands in the member and says it. The Prophet ﷺ went in the marketplace. And after this he came and he checked the food. Rasulullah ﷺ, he saw a subra ta'am, like a pile of food. So, ﷺ, he adkhala yadahu fi ta'am, fa asab balala. Fa qala ma hadha ya sahib ta'am. Qala ya Rasulullah, asabat wa sama. The Prophet ﷺ is an inspector. And this is the truthfulness of Imam, of a leader. He went to the marketplace and he sees it's a pile of food. He stick his hand inside. The Prophet ﷺ, he felt that the wheat or the rice or whatever they have is wheat. The Prophet ﷺ said, what's wrong? What's, what's going on? Say, oh, Prophet of Allah was raining, you understand the food got wheat. You see, he tried to make excuse. You are not truthful. He kept the, the wet, the rotten food inside and the good food outside. So what was the answer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Why he didn't leave it in the front? So everybody can see it. Whosoever deceive us is not part of us. Subhanallah. Look, this is what's Islam. Being truthful when you buy, being truthful when you receive, when you give everything. Give the proper amount of money, give the right amount of money, give real money, not fake money, okay? And also you need to be truthful and tell him, yes, this car been in a wreck. Or this, you understand, been a used item. This is not new. So the Prophet ﷺ say that فَإِن صَدَقَ وَبَيَّنَا بُورِكَ لَهُمَا فِي بَيْعِهِمَا 
if both of them, the buyer and the seller, being truthful, and they explain everything, the good and the bad, the plus and the minus, so Allah will bless their bargain for the buyer and the seller. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless their bargain. وَإِنْ كَتَمَا وَكَذَّبَا مُحِتْ بَرَكَتْ بَيْعِهِمْ But if they conceal and they cover and try to make up, oh, it's good, brother, is this you understand? No. Now the barakah, the blessings will go out of the money, will be, go out of the product itself. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this deen, this religion, this Islam, teaching us everything good for this life and the hereafter. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the sadaqeen, the truthful one, when they speak, when they act, when they buy, when they sell. Until I see you next time, I'm your host, Muhammad Said Adli, from Columbia, South Carolina, United States. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته